Hello, I'm Bo Lanerdal and I'm at the Department of Nutrition and also have a joint appointment in Internal Medicine at University of California in Davis. And today in this clinical pearl I will discuss uh, the protein lactoferrin. And lactoferrin is a major protein in breast milk. It was first discovered to bind iron, therefore the name lacto in milk and ferrin carrying iron. And it's iron in its trivalent form, that is the non-pro-oxidative form. And we believe that's a very safe way to deliver iron to the newborn infant. It also has antimicrobial properties. It was shown pretty early in England that lactoferrin can inhibit the growth of pathogens, particularly in that case uh, E. coli. And if they added iron to the breast milk or to breast milk lactoferrin, then the antibacterial property was abolished. So it was clearly an effect of the iron binding capacity of lactoferrin. So that was first discovered to be a bacteriostatic effect of lactoferrin. Later on, it was also found that it can kill bacteria, a bactericidal effect particularly by Dr. Arnold, and several pathogens that you don't want to see in infants are killed effectively by lactoferrin. The highest concentration in breast milk is in colostrum, or very early milk, very high concentrations. Then it goes down, but all the time during lactation, lactoferrin is actually about 15 to 20 percent of all the protein. So it's really one of the major breast milk proteins, and you may wonder why that is. Like I said, since lactoferrin is bacteriostatic and bactericidal, it will have an effect on the gut microflora. So it will prevent pathogens to grow in the intestine, but it also has stimulatory effects on some of the good bugs that we want to see there. So lactoferrin there has a dual function. You may wonder how lactoferrin can act down in the small intestine because normally we digest proteins. However, uh, in infants, that capacity is diminished. They are not as efficient as we as adults when it comes to digesting proteins. The stomach pH is higher and therefore pepsin is less active. The uh, pancreatic enzymes are not up to par yet, so therefore Digestion is not complete and lactoferrin has a structure that makes it very, very stable. And we actually found long time ago that there are significant quantities of human lactoferrin in the stool of breastfed infants, showing that it really can survive passage of the gut. And we later on wondered if lactoferrin only acts on the bacteria in the gut and we had a suspicion that there would be a very specific binding site for lactoferrin that it could latch onto. There were some indications from histochemistry earlier that lactoferrin may bind specifically to the gut mucosa. And we subsequently isolated and characterized a receptor for lactoferrin. So now lactoferrin can survive digestion and it can bind to the receptor and it actually gets internalized into the enterocyte. And there it goes to the nucleus. And in the nucleus it affects gene expression. And therefore it is really a capacity of lactoferrin to affect many other genes, such as those involved in mucosal proliferation. So lactoferrin stimulates the intestinal growth both by proliferation and differentiation. But it also affects components of the immune system, cytokines in particular. So several uh, anti-inflammatory cytokines are upregulated by lactoferrin, which may explain some of the functions in the newborn infants, which I will come back to shortly. So if it now has anti-infective properties, uh, like I said, how is that translated into clinical practice? 
Well, there was one study done by Dr. King at Johns Hopkins, and he fed infants formula with the cow's form of lactoferrin added to the formula at a concentration relatively similar to what you see in breast milk. And they found two major things. They found that they, the infants that got the formula with the lactoferrin had fewer upper respiratory uh, infections than those that got regular formula. They also found uh, increased hematocrit, which is indicative then, of course, that their iron status was improved. So lactoferrin in that study seemed to improve iron status and reduce infections, which was very encouraging. Since that time, there have been several large size clinical trials on preterm infants, particularly by Dr. Manzoni in Italy, uh, who has done a couple of studies where he gave the cow's form again, the bovine lactoferrin, in capsules to uh, preterm infants. And he found a reduction in both sepsis and necrotizing enterocolitis or neck. Uh, both, of course, severe complications in preterm infants that we don't want to see. So these studies are very encouraging and it may be, again, the dual function of lactoferrin of uh, inhibiting or killing bacteria, but also boosting the immune system and also helping to keep the intestinal mucosa in good shape because that's one of the fundamental problems in particularly in neck that the mucosa is severely degraded and lactoferrin may help to prevent and recover that from that type of damage. Now there are two large clinical studies on preterm infants in the UK and in Australia multi-center studies and they're ongoing and we are looking forward to the results from those and hope that they will confirm uh, what Dr. Manzoni showed in his studies. But otherwise we, we need further clinical studies on infants, uh, also on term infants. We really don't know the uh, proper dose of lactoferrin to use, what form of lactoferrin and it's most likely also a balance of how much iron you should add to formula and how much lactoferrin. So those clinical studies will proceed. We are doing one over in Sweden and there are other studies I know that are also going on at this moment. So overall I would say that lactoferrin shows really promise when it comes to clinical outcomes for formula fed infants. And of course, breastfed infants are always the gold standard. And, but here we have the potential to maybe improve some of the deficits that you see in formula fed infants and make them more similar to breastfed infants. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and watching this Clinical Pearl video on pediatricnutritionce.org. Thank you.